Hello and welcome to Tech and More. As part of the ongoing series that is Salesforce automation testing, welcome to one more video. Now, as you have seen that till now we have covered these topics which I'm scrolling to. We have learned about automation in general. We have learned what select selectors are. We have learned what is an XPath. We saw a couple of frequent functions in XPath. Uh, what are access methods and all these things. Now, before going ahead, what I want to do is that I want to make your system set up for test automation. And how do we do that? We download a couple of softwares or a couple of uh, tools and uh, we make them test automation friendly. And then going forward, I'll continue with explaining you some different topics, for example, alerts and desired capabilities and time and present and all these things. But the good thing will be that now we will be including all the things that we learn in a script or in a test, I would say in a test case. So for example, till now, if you have seen my video, you, you, must, you must have seen that we are writing down the experts on a web page and all these things. But now we will be actually writing an actual live test case, right? And I'll be showing you how to write that test case with test steps and we'll be executing that test case in real, right? So of course, all those things cannot be done on its own. We have to have a place where we write the code. For example, it's here. We have to have a, a way by which the executions happen, right? So after the setup, you'll be able to write down the steps or the test steps or a test script in a manner as you can see on the screen right now. Uh, I mean, you, you see this multiple steps here, right? So, and then we, you know, we'll be learning different topics and then we'll be showing them in practical by including them in the scripts and the steps, and then we'll be executing them as well. So you'll be able to see the real life test automation execution, right? So yeah, let's start. So basically to configure your system for test automation, you need primarily three things to do. Uh, the number one being Java. So let's go to that first. So uh, Java is, is a programming language, of course, you already know, but we have to have JDK or a Java development kit to run Java successfully on our system. So in order to do that, we have this URL and a note, don't worry, do not worry about uh, these URLs. I'll be sharing all the details of this video. For example, the URLs that you need to download uh, or, uh, you know, a couple of code that you need to configure your system. So don't worry about that. Then uh, let's first of all go and let's see how to install, sorry, how to download Java or JDK. So this is the URL that you need to access. I already have it open. So I go here and I see different types of JDKs that I can download. Which one to do? Of course, you know, you have this in that it has to be the latest one, but it is basically the one which says is the latest long-term support because it is the most stable one. So that is JDK 21. So you click on JDK 21, you have these options in front of you, depending upon your system, it's a Mac or a Windows or what, you go ahead and download and then install Java. And now a word of advice to you. Uh, I honestly do not believe in showing the steps for such things that is, you know, how to download a software, how to install it, all these things, because if you are planning to become an SDL, you have to know how to install basic things and how to configure them. And of course you will face some issues depending upon the system and everything. So what do you do in that case? You simply go to Google, you search your error and you get the results, right? Of course, I can tell you the steps and everything. I, I mean, it's a, it's a cakewalk for me. But the thing is that uh, explaining you the concepts of test automation in detail is a different thing, but telling you the very basic things, for example, downloading and installing the software is a very, 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 very uh, altogether different thing, right? So I want you to work on downloading, installing stuff on your own. I will tell you what is required. I will tell you the URLs. I will tell you the method, and then you have to go and do it on your own. This is how you learn, right? So optimizing Google learn, uh, searching on Google is also an art, is also a skill set that you should know. So why not try it from here, right? But yeah, don't worry. The test automation concepts and the entire course will be as detailed as possible. But as far as these simple things are concerned, try doing them on your own. It, and it goes without saying, if you feel that if you feel that there is any problem at any point of time, please feel free to comment uh, with that particular error. And I, and, I, and I assure you to either help you via comments or I create a specific, specific video for you, right? So this is how you download and install Java. Then number two is ID. Uh, ID, as I did show it to you at the starting of the video as well, one, one more time I'll show it to you. ID is basically the space wherein you write down your test steps or your test scripts or your code, right? So it can be Eclipse, it can be IntelliJ. I personally uh, prefer IntelliJ more. The reason being that it is more interactive. Uh, but yes, again, if you want to use Eclipse, it's up to you. But yes, for now, I'll be showing you or I'll be um, 
I mean, you can see the URL for IntelliJ, but I will be pasting the URL of both IntelliJ and Eclipse in the video description. So this is the URL and this is the web page. So if you see hit here, you have the option for Windows, you have the option for Mac and all these things. So depending upon your system, depending upon your configuration, go ahead and uh, install it. Cool. So, so, so this is done. And one more thing, note for you, you must have seen this free 30 day trial, right? So normally the organizations buy the license for IntelliJ, but if your organization is a bit hesitant to do it or you are learning at your own level. So I would suggest you to go ahead and download Eclipse because it's open source. It's, uh, sorry, it's, for, it's free of cost, right? So that is about ID. Now let's move on to the next section that is Selenium libraries using Maven. <clears throat> So what is Selenium or what is Selenium WebDriver is a framework that permits you to execute cross-browser tests, right? So uh, if you think about it, you know, you have Java till now, you have uh, ID. So on the ID, you can go ahead and write down the Java code. How do we include automation or how do you include Selenium in it is what Selenium WebDriver libraries are, right? So the code that allows you to interact I mean, that the code that allows your scripts to interact with the browser, run those steps on browser, give you the results, generate reports, all these things, all this code is there in the Selenium libraries, right? So with the help of these libraries, you can make your system automation friendly or test automation or Selenium friendly, right? Now, of course, Java, Ruby, Python, these are a couple of supported programming languages in Selenium, but we use Java because that is the most commonly used. Now, you know, earlier what used to happen was that if you want to uh, include these libraries or these jars in your uh, in your ID, for example, IntelliJ or Eclipse, you had to install these libraries. Rather, you had to download these libraries, then move those folders, consider them as folders, into your project folder specifically. And then you had to declare those jars in your ID as well. That is where you write the code, right? Now, with the introduction of Selenium 4.0, a very good thing has been done that you need not need not download copy paste those things into your project folder and then you know you go ahead and you uh, declare those those libraries in your ied as well all of these things are not required to be done you simply have to go ahead and you simply have to somehow copy this for example consider this as an api or consider this as a library you simply have to copy this ap uh, sorry you call simply have to copy this dependency and you have to paste it in form.xml what is form.xml is something i'll be just showing you in a while so the good thing is that you simply declare these dependencies and you need not worry about anything the executions happen automatically without requiring any manual download now since you you know of course if you're watching this video you're learning things and you have not dealt with that problem earlier uh, wherein you have to download things and everything but trust me on this if when you have to download a file you have to move it you have to declare it every time so let's let's imagine that the system has changed right so you need to do all these things again that is where the selenium 4.0 update helps you so you need not uh, download these things individually on every system you have the dependency it straight away talks to that external source and it calls right and this is how form.xml looks like form.xml is basically a page object model right so let me show it to you. See, this is form.xml. Now, what is form.xml? How to create one and all these things I'll be discussing at stretch in coming videos. But don't worry for now, just understand that this is form.xml. Cool. Now, uh, you might ask that, okay, if this is form.xml, is it a part, is it a standard part of the Java project? It's not. When you create a new program on IntelliJ in Java, what you see is a simple, very, very simple, very, very straightforward Java program. You have to understand this thing, right? So uh, how do you convert it into the form.xml? So form.xml is basically a part of thing which we term as Maven, right? So it says just about Maven and plugins. So basically Maven is a project management tool that allows you to maintain a proper project structure number one number two it removes the dependencies of downloading jars correlated to the last slide that i was uh, showing so you need not download jars explicitly you simply have to go ahead and you simply have to uh, call these dependencies which we saw just here declare them in form.xml and you're good to go now how does this form.xml file and everything come into the place 
that is the way uh, i mean that that can be achieved when we convert a java project into a maven project right so how do you do it you click right click on the project you click on add framework support and herein you will find a maven option of course i do not have i mean i have already maven uh, converted for this project so i'll not see it but you will see the maven option here you click on checkbox and you click on okay and your project gets converted into maven and you see all these different structure and the srcs and everything right so once you do that you are good to go and uh, you have the dependencies and everything now the code that you see here which is again let me go to form.xml the code that you see here which you require to declare for a selenium project is something which i'll be sharing in the in the video description as well so you will be able to go ahead and you will be able to simply copy this entire dependencies paste them in your project and your entire project or your entire system will be selenium web driver friendly with maven right so all in all you have to install number 1 java number 2 uh id number 3 you have to make it maven friendly and then in form.xml you go and paste the dependencies and that is how your system is entirely test automation selenium web driver friendly focus on these three things and i'll be sharing all the required code and everything in the video description have a look at it and once you do that in the coming videos we'll be having a look of how to write down these test steps as you see in the screen so that's all i hope you like it any questions please please feel free to comment and uh, hopefully see you in the next video thank you